is Your Life, America's most talked about program, and brought to you every week at this time by Hazel Bishop Long Lasting Lipstick, Hazel Bishop Long Lasting Complexion Glow, and Hazel Bishop's new Long Lasting Nail Polish. And by the way, get a copy of January issue of Cosmopolitan Magazine. You'll find in it a very fascinating story on uh, Ralph Edwards and This Is Your Life. It's all new stands right now. Here it is, Ralph Edwards and This Is Your Life. And now, your host, Ralph Edwards, at this moment is on the street here in Hollywood, the Al Capitan Theater out here in front. He's conducting an on the street, a man on the street interview. So you know what it's all about. Let's go out and meet him. Here he is, Mr. This Is Your Life himself, Ralph Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Yeah, it's always been my theory that there are interesting people in any crowd, wherever it may be gathered, so I'm sure there must be some in this group tonight. You've heard me saying you come on up and all that. We have a sort of a man in the street program going on. You have? Well, now, wait a minute here. Uh, good evening, sir. What is your name? Roger Augustine. Good. You're from Michigan State, too, That's right? right? Oh, fine. Well, let's have some, let's have some ladies. Would you uh, come on up? Uh, you're from Michigan State? Right. Come on up, lady. Uh, what is your occupation? Dan Barger, student, ah. Jamestown, New York. Good fella. Hello to everybody in Jamestown. Oh, that's good. Hello, what did you, how are you? You're a lovely looking lady. Uh, would you mind giving us your name? Well, I'm Pansy Stockton's father. -y. Pansy Stockton, uh, what is it? Pansy Stockton, father. -y. I see. Well, is it Miss or Mrs.? It's Mrs. Mrs. That's what was right. it before it was Mrs.? It was Pansy Stockton. Oh, I see. Well, my goodness. Well, that's uh, uh, very nice uh, to see you there. Now, you're, uh, what do you do, Miss Stockton? Oh, I'm a painter from Santa Fe. Are you? Aren't you? My, you're just decked out in a very beautiful. I wish we had color television. Hi, gang. Going by. It's a man in the street program. Uh, where are you from? From Santa Fe, New Mexico. Oh, yes, I see. Well, that's a city famous the world over as an art colony, isn't that's it, Miss right. Stockton? Well, uh, would you say that you've had an interesting career? Uh, oh, Pansy yes. Stockton? I've loved every minute of it. I'm sure you have. What a really <laughs> wonderful looking lady, isn't she? Ladies and gentlemen, well, we know that it's been interesting as well as inspiring, and we're sure that our viewers uh, would like to share your experiences with you. Now, uh, the best way to do that is for me to tell you, Pansy Stockton, that uh, this is your life. <laughs> This is not an audition of a man on the street program at all. This is not an audition of a man on the street program. You're on, hi gang, yeah. You're on live television coast to coast right now. Oh my goodness. You didn't know that, did you, Pansy it's Doctor? My face on <laughs> <laughs> now there are lots of wonderful surprises in store for you on our Hazel Bishop stage as we relive with you the life of a woman who has overcome adversities in her fight to create a new art form, a woman who has actually taken nature's own God-given living colors and created pictures that no painter's brush can do. Are you beginning to get the drift? You're that woman, Pansy Stockton of Santa Fe, New Mexico, and this <laughs> is your life. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right, come with me into the theater in our chair of honor, and during the time it takes us, are you, are you ready to go through your life and the whole business? Oh, goodness, I'll make an open book of it and for a thing like that. All right, you thought uh, this your life was on Friday. It is in it's, Santa Fe. Well, it is in Santa Fe. Yeah, this is Wednesday. We're on coast to coast here. During oh. the time it takes us to get inside uh, on our stage, Carol Richards has a musical resolution for the new year. Resolve right now to say goodbye to lipstick smudge and smear. With Hazel Bishop's lipstick on, you'll have a bright new year. That was great, Carol. Oh, thank you, Bob. But you know, girls, along about midnight tomorrow night, you're going to need a lipstick that stays on you and not on him. I'm going to show you a test with Hazel Bishop lipstick that Bob. approves... The hand test, let me do it, huh? Okay. You know, I do this for my friends all the time when I want to prove to them how Hazel Bishop stays on until I decide to wash or cream it off. It's all yours. Well, now, first I take my Hazel Bishop lipstick and I make a mark on my palm like this. Okay, now here's another brand. Then I take any other lipstick and I make another mark across the Hazel Bishop like that. Now here's a tissue. And then I blot it very thoroughly. This, incidentally, is very important. Mm -hmm. Now remember, everybody, this is the Hazel Bishop lipstick here the other over here. Now, I rub my hand as hard as I can. You see how clear and bright Hazel Bishop lipstick is? And the other, it's nearly all gone. Thank you, Carol. And girls, now I'm sure you understand why today, 
Hazel Bishop is by far America's largest selling lipstick. Why it should be your lipstick. Well, she's just beginning to get the drift of this. <laughs> She said, I, I heard it was a man on the street program. <laughs> no. I was watching the man on the street. No, this is for real. This is your life. <laughs> Come on, Pansy Stockton. Are you ready to uh, leap through the pages of your life with me and with everybody? Oh, dear, yes. <laughs> I'll do almost anything more. <laughs> all right, well, uh, right now, all you have to do is sit down. But we're going to do it literally, leaping through the pages of your life as we turn the pages of this book. Now, do you recognize this little volume? I do indeed. Well, where'd you get that? Uh-huh. <laughs> this is going to be a sort of a slow denouement, I think, as things come to life around here. Meditation, it says, and it's a poem your late husband, Roscoe Stockton, right. wrote before you were married. That's and yet, right. its very lines seem to symbolize your whole life. A love of beauty found in God's own handiwork, whether it be in the great outdoors or in the soul of man. <laughs> Alone I sit at dusk tonight beneath a leaden sky and let my fancy's wings take flight to other days gone by. Well, your days begin, Pansy Stockton, in El Dorado Springs, Missouri, where you are born the daughter of Jenny and David Repass. You have an older brother, Robert, and a younger brother, Paul. When Pansy was just a child, the family traveled from Missouri to Colorado in a late model covered wagon. Yes, and I delayed the trip while I was being born in Independence, Missouri. That's who? That's my other brother. Two familiar voices out of your childhood. Pansy, who are they? Well, they're my brothers. Yes, from Denver, Colorado, your brothers Robert Repass and Dr. Paul Repass. And here they are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bob, you were there when uh, Pansy arrived. What kind of a baby was she? She was big. She was 12 and a half pounds. 12 and a half pounds. Was she, <laughs> was, I kept uh, up a mean average. <laughs> you kept up with that average? Yes. Well, was Pansy there when you arrived in this world, Paul? Well, she was not only there, but she cooked biscuits and uh, cooked ham and eggs, made coffee for the country doctor. And, <laughs> Two neighbor ladies <laughs> who were there What'd when I was born. <laughs> What'd you say, Pansy? I said I was a good girl for the shape I was in then. <laughs> <laughs> you were only seven years old at that time, weren't you, Pansy? When this fella was born, you were cooking all that. Okay. Well, uh, she had great faith, didn't she, Bob? <laughs> yes, she uh, had great faith. And uh, she sang solos in church when she was about three years old. and. Uh, <laughs> She uh, attended Sunday school regularly, and I remember uh, one time when her face uh, stood her in good stead. You remember the wreck at, uh, when he was on her way to uh, Uray? What happened there, Pansy? Do. Tell us about that and how faith worked out there. He was about this long. Who? This one. Paul, doctor. And he was the most precious thing in my whole life. And we were going up on the little old train that goes from Silverton to Array, a little narrow cage, and we had a wreck. And the engine went off and, and killed the engineer and the fireman, and, and the coach went away. Up, and I was praying so hard to get him through because I knew he was destined for something real big. You feel and your prayers were answered, is that it? There was no doubt about it. They tried, engineers and everybody else tried to see why that coach didn't go over. And throughout all the bad shakeups of your life, the same kind of faith has given you strength and confidence. Uh, what did your parents do there in Grand Junction, Colorado, Paul? Well, they ran a boarding house, and one of our <laughs> frequent guests was Buffalo Bill Cody, and I and Pansy uh, used to sit by the hour and listen to his tales of uh, uh, nature. Is that so? <laughs> and after <laughs> Grand Junction, about? Why, uh, then the family moved to Elroy Springs, Colorado, where uh, Pop and Mom uh, ap operated uh, the Grand View Hotel, mm -hmm. and uh, Pansy <laughs> helped out with the rooms and everything okay. possible she could. Uh, well, that's wonderful. It was here, too, that she met her future husband, Roscoe Stockton. What do you do now, Bob? I'm with the Denver and Rye Grand uh, Railroad, the Scenic Road. Yeah, I'll say. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Robert and Dr. Paul Repass. We're going to see you in a moment <laughs> there. <laughs> ah, those were hours of lilt and life 
with never thought of pain, ere care was born, while joy was rife and youth supreme in reign. The time, well, let's see, right from the beginning, from the time you were a child, you were experimenting with a new art form, a form you've named sun painting. And by 1916, you're proficient enough to sell your first picture. Now, what actually is sun painting, Pansy? Well, I've, I've painted all my life. Mother said she thought I was born with a paintbrush in each hand. I yes. doubt that. But in living in the mountains so much and getting so close to the beautiful things of nature, I started building up pictures like mosaics out of the things that I found around. Mm -hmm. I used about 250 types of uh, vegetation entirely. Nature's and own? I create color. a thing that looks like a, an oil painting very mm -hmm. much. And There's a picture really of one there now. You mean to tell me those are not actually uh, <laughs> paintings? Uh, that's, uh, those are leaves themselves that's and the, right. the colors from the ground and from the trees. That's right. Is that and bark the, there? The water is milkweed floss. Oh, my. And the, the bark makes the big rocks and things. That's something. And during the past 37 <laughs> years, you've made the art world conscious of a great new form, sun painting. <laughs> I think of mornings bright with dew, of aisles of fragrant trees and gentle winds that erstwhile blew life's wild, sweet melodies. 1918, June 25th, you and Roscoe Stockton are married and hike 16 miles across the Rockies to a little mountain cabin near El Dorado Springs, That's Colorado. Right. That's right. And soon after your marriage, you move to Denver, where your husband becomes principal of the Bryant Grade School. That's right. And that's where I first came to know Pansy and her husband, and she had talents that none of us ever dreamed of at you, that time. Listen, do you recognize that voice out of your past, Pansy? No. It's a dear friend from your Denver years. You haven't seen him in many, many years. So here he is. Casey? No, Prescott Eames. Prescott Eames. But I want to know who Casey is. I'll <laughs> There's Prescott Eames. <laughs> oh, I imagine him. Now, what about these uh, other talents of Pansy's you're talking about, Mr. Eames? Well, among uh, all the other things, I think that uh, Pansy, busy as she was with her sun painting, she always had time to do things for her friends. That's the outstanding quality of Pansy. Yes, sir. And she taught school, too, didn't she? Mm, yes. Uh, at one time, she was an uh, uh, assistant in the manual training in, in Denver. But uh, that isn't the principal thing. When we think of Pansy. She had other qualities that none of us dreamed of at that time. Oh, well, let's listen. Careful, careful. <laughs> now, who's the baby? That isn't the baby. That's Pansy. That's her voice. That's her voice on the radio in, in Denver, on KOA, in 1926. <laughs> it sounded, <laughs> sounded very realistic. Well, it should. Uh, Pansy at that time had two uh, very healthy squeakers in her family. I'm afraid one of them didn't do much squealing when he was born. Uh, oh, whose voice is that, Pansy? That's my, that's my little boy. The younger of your two sons, now a police officer in Denver, Colorado, Paul Stockton. Here he is. <laughs> Thank you. <Lee. laughs> well, I understand your entrance into the world wasn't an easy one, Paul. No, it wasn't. I'm afraid. Wait a minute, Pansy. Don't ruin that beautiful shawl <laughs> here. I, <laughs> I have the concession on Thank handkerchiefs you. around here. When I, was, when I was born, I only weighed two and a half pounds, and I wasn't breathing. <laughs> Mom here Got him going, put right. her mouth away, and literally blew the breath of life into me. Is that so? You weren't breathing when you were born, and she blew, blew the breath of life into you. Where's your older brother, Paul? My older brother, Oak, is uh, a major in the Air Force. He's stationed in Japan. I see. Speaking of Oak, uh, do you remember... He's where did you? Tokyo. Do you remember when I got hit by a car, and... Who oh, came running in and said, Mom, Mom, Paul got hit by a car, but he ain't dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you seem to have survived that accident all right there. Here, uh, keep, your, keep your chins up. <laughs> <laughs> have a seat in Mama's past. Keep your chins up, he says. How do you like that? Thank you, Paul. You're going to see you in a moment. Came days when stubble clad the field and garnered grain was stored, and every ripened fruit made yield to swell the winter's hoard. And so the busy, productive years drift by, Pansy Stockton. Now there are two healthy, active boys to raise, a husband who makes large demands on your time, and friends who need your constant help. 
Among her many friends were the Sioux Indians of South Dakota, whom Pansy has helped in many ways, ever interceding for them with the government to help preserve their land and their rights. Now, who could that be, Pansy? Your good friend of many years, here to take his place in your life, Pansy, it Charles Eagle, Eagle Plume. Plume. Eagle oh. Plume. <laughs> Did you and Eagle Plume meet, Pansy? <laughs> Hello, Eagle Plume. We certainly surprised this girl. She's just beginning to catch on. If this is your life, she still thinks oh, no. it's a man on the street. I'm still standing out there <laughs> listening to the man on the street. Uh, uh, how did you I two meet? I met this one because of his own performances. He's a very wonderful Did you lecturer. have a dream once, too, that you were uh, going to meet? Uh, no. Tell us about it. <laughs> well, it seems that I was to meet someone with a, a little feather in his hat. You dreamed this? And that... He was to make a, a lot of difference in my life and give me a great deal of pleasure. And it wasn't more than two hours after the thing had occurred. So here he was with two feathers in his hat. Where was and this? In Denver, Colorado, in the theater, in the Denver theater. In a lobby in the theater. You That's were walking right. in right after the dream. You saw, <laughs> and you've been good friends ever since, haven't That's you, right. Eagle Bloom? And we, yes, we've good done a lot friends. <laughs> I remember I danced in the ceremonial when mm -hmm. the Sioux adopted you That's into right. the tribe as a token of their respect and their appreciation for the many wonderful things you did for them. There's a picture. What name did you give Pansy, uh, Eagle Plume? Wenasti Washtawin, which means flower that beautifies the earth. Yes, a most appropriate name. Well, you and Pansy's past will get together at a Hazel Bishop party at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel right after the show. All of your out-of-town guests, Pansy, are staying at the Hollywood Roosevelt. They've been here, too, and you didn't know it. Thank you, Eagle oh Plume. You'll God. see you later. <laughs> That's why I'm so the <laughs> That's right. We had to keep you out of sight. I tell you, I'm the most unsuccessful person on earth. And falling leaves <laughs> laid bare the nest from which the birds had flown and left it swayed with sad unrest to brunt the breeze alone. 1942, your sons, Oakley and Paul, both married by now, are far off to war, serving their country. A few years later, your husband, Roscoe Stockton, dies. Alone, with your finances practically depleted, and with only your artistic talent as a means of support, you bravely face the uncertain future. Pansy thought her son paintings might be better accepted in Santa Fe, New Mexico, so she moved there. Now, is that a voice you recognize, Pansy? You will when you see the face. Another dear friend over 30 years, Mrs. Evadna Hammersley of Denver. Oh. Evadna! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I never hear you on the radio anymore. You're, you're going to now. You're going to, because she's very busy. Yeah, a lot about me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you don't know what she's going to say either, do you? <laughs> you kept in touch with Pansy after she left Denver, didn't you, Evadna Hammersley? As best we could, Ralph, that's right. <laughs> that first year in Santa Fe was a pretty tough year, wasn't it? Yes. She didn't have very much money. She had just enough to buy a little piece of land about 10 miles out from Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. And that first <laughs> winter in Santa Fe, she lived in a tent. Sleeping on mm -hmm. the ground through those bitter, mm -hmm. cold nights. That's right. And never losing an ounce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 my. Well, I know at that time there were many times when she went to bed at night not caring too much whether she got up the next okay. morning or not. But through all these troubled times, you never once lost faith that someday no. your son painting would be recognized, did you, Pansy? That's not the main faith. There's, there's a faith that's much stronger than that. You're so right. It carried you through, didn't it? it carries anybody through. That's right. <laughs> well, she... Sold a painting now and then to carry herself along and to get the supplies she needed to build an adobe kiva that she was building with her own hands yet. You built the kiva with your own hands, adobe? I had a, a Mexican that couldn't understand any English and I couldn't understand any Mexican and together we, got, we built this house. You get more work done that way if you can't talk. <laughs> well, well, you've come a mighty long way, Pansy. They, they drew a, a line around here. I took a nail. I put it in the ground and tied a long string to it. I wanted this thing to be just a certain size and size. Sure. That was the center of it, the Sipapu of the Kiva. What'd you say? The Sipapu. Oh, I thought That's you were criticizing the, the show or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I go around and draw a big line around there. Yes. And I says to him, all right, we'll begin here. We'll go out here. And we dig down for the foundation. Dig, put it in. That's how it started. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. Well, she has come along. Oh, right. yes, she <laughs> has. Today, her sun paintings are accepted as an art form all over the world. 
They've brought joy and pleasure to just <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of people, and they're going to continue to bring joy to people for a long time. Well, acclaim is all the sweeter coming late, isn't it, Pansy? <laughs> what do you do now, Evadna? Well, I still have my half-hour radio show every day on KOA in Denver, and uh, Monday with the help of a friend, Salome Hansen, I started a new television show oh, that's also wonderful. going to be a daily. Yes. I'd like to have you stop and be my guest once. Look, on KOA TV, ex excuse me, Pansy, for this one thing, but KOA TV, ladies and gentlemen, is joining This Is Your Life tonight for the first time. Let's bid them welcome. Hey, hi there, everybody in Colorado, my old home state. Especially Marino. Come on, get the cow off the track, Aunt Ellen. Let's get on with the show, huh? Well, we're glad to have you with us, you know, and all your friends back there in Denver watching tonight, uh, Pansy. And thank you, Evadna Hammersley. You'll see her at the party right after. Thank you, Ralph. <laughs> I know that upward through the blue, above the clouds that fill, however hearts may feel or do, the stars are shining still. June 1950, in nearby Taos, New Mexico, you meet a handsome Air Force captain. And right after Christmas that year, Pansy and I were married in Henrietta, Texas. Now, this guy really kept our secret from you, Pansy, and helped us recreate your life. There was no he's convention going on. He's a big stinker. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's now chief of the administrative division of the state engineer of New Mexico, your husband, Howard Fothery. Hey, here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a joke this guy has pulled on you. It's strangely it's enough. Yes? It's just awful. Guess what? What? Today's our third wedding anniversary. How about <laughs> Wonderful. Congratulations. Come on, sit here, Howard. Come on, sit down here beside your wife, Howard. This is your life, Pansy Stockton Fothery. Oh, my. If only this program were beamed to Tokyo so that your son, Oak, could have seen it. I have been watching it, Mom, all the way through. And so have Bev and the three kids. And they're not watching in Tokyo either. They've been behind our Hazel Bishop curtains all the time. We've flown them halfway around the world so they could share this night with you. Here they are, your son, Major Oakley Stockton. And here's Chip and Scott. Come on here, boy. Here we go. And here. <laughs> Look here. Here's, here's Chip. Here's Chip, my grandma. Here's, oh, this is Scotty. And here's Chip. And here is Bev, your your uh, daughter-in-law and the granddaughter you have never seen, she's sleeping, little Dory D. Sit down, oh. Grandma, with all of them. There you this are. This is my first view of her. Yes, the first time you've seen I've her, Pansy. Seen Come on, you get in here by, oh. by Grandma, two kitties. Oh, my. Don't you get <laughs> well, they're all here now, the whole gang, the friends out of your past, Pansy, your family. Here's Scotty and Chip. Here you are. From near and far, and as we turn to the last page, we read, and comes the thought that all is good, whatever else may seem, and ever, if but understood, God's smile shines on supreme. Now, this has been the rule of your wonderful life, Pansy Stockton Fothery. This is what has given beauty and purpose to your work, your art. The worth of a life is not measured in dollars and cents, but in the inspiration and joy that you give to others. Now, you've done that ab abundantly, Pansy, and God bless you. Thank you so much. I think she deserves a big hand, this wonderful lady. <laughs> now, before we look into our Hazel Bishop future, uh, Carol Richards has another version of the song she sang earlier. Thank Hazel Bishop also for that natural, unrouged look. Complexion glow will never show. Best tip you ever took. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> Girls, do you know that every month, over 300,000 women give up using cake and paste rouges and start using Hazel Bishop Complexion Glow. Now the reason is plain to be seen because rouge makes any woman look hard and older, but Complexion Glow gives you just a, a touch of color, a soft, youthful glow that looks completely natural. You know, Bob, there isn't any doubt at all that Complexion Glow does wonders for any woman, but I've noticed something else. Whenever my friends talk about Complexion Glow, they always mention about how easy it is to put on. Why don't you show us how easy Complexion Glow is to put on, Carol? Well, all righty, I'll do that. Okay. You know, all you need is just a drop. It just is impossible for you to go wrong. It never streaks or blotches. 
It never piles up on the surface of the skin the way rouge does. Thanks, Carol. You know, if you talk to any woman, she'll tell you that Complexion Glow does more for her than any other cosmetics she uses. If you haven't yet tried it, get a bottle of Hazel Bishop Complexion Glow at your nearest cosmetic counter. That's Hazel Bishop Complexion Glow. <laughs> All the people gathered around you here, Pansy, were flown to Hollywood by TWA, the luxurious 300-mile-an-hour TWA Transworld Airlines Constellation, the airline that flies three-quarters of the way around the world. Now, you'll be glad to know that Hazel Bishop is presenting you with a film of this program, you see, oh. and a 16-millimeter uh, Bell & Howell sound projector so you can play, and also this Bell & Howell 16-millimeter movie camera uh, so oh, that you'll be able to uh, take movies, you <laughs> see. This is a new baby. Uh, yeah, and of the scenes you're going to sun paint, you know. Oh, Here you go. Can you hold on to that for us there, uh, Chip? Hold on real tight. There we are, and uh, listen, as a memento of this night, Pansy, Hazel Bishop has asked Marshall, jewelers of Fifth Avenue, New York, to create this charm bracelet that we have for you here. Marshall, you know, oh. have the largest collection of bracelet charms in the world, and each charm on this oh. one represents an important event in your eventful life. And here to match oh. this lovely bracelet Thank pansy is a Hazel Bishop jeweled lipstick. I like that. They made it all possible. <laughs> you <laughs> oh, bless your heart. I Oh, I'm liking this girl better all the time. Now, we know that the old station wagon, the old station wagon you rattled around in to sell your sun paintings is about on its last legs. So Hazel Bishop has for you, from Coal Finder in Chicago, the world's largest mercury dealers, our gift of a brand new 1954 mercury. And here are the keys, Pansy, to your Coal Finder mercury. There you go. <laughs> Finally, Pansy, here to pay tribute. And this is a final surprise. Here to pay tribute to you is the personal representative of Governor Edwin Meacham of, uh, you know, New Mexico. This is the state controller of New Mexico, Mr. Ed Hartman. Come out, Mr. Hartman. <laughs> there <we are>. <laughs> <laughs> the official business prevents the governor from coming here in person. So he has asked me, as his representative, to convey this message to you. <laughs> Your sun paintings of New Mexico scenes faithfully portray the beauty that God gave our land of enchantment. In recognition of the honor which you bring our state, I hereby proclaim that of the 340 days of New Mexico sunshine each year, the sunniest of them all shall hereafter be known as Pansy Stockton Sunshine Day in New Mexico. And that is her birthday, right? Isn't My that birthday. something? Sign Edwin L. Meacham, Governor of the State of New Mexico. Your birthday will be Sunshine Day. Thank you very much, Mr. Ed Hartman, and thank you, Governor Edwin Meacham of New Mexico. This is your life, Pansy Stockton, fathery of Missouri, Colorado, New Mexico. May your spirit whether expressed in your sun painting or yourself, continue to shine on all of us for a long time to come. Thank you, and may God well, bless you. you. Before the old year ends and the new year begins, may I remind you girls that no matter what kind of work you do, no matter what the condition of your nails, Hazel Bishop long-lasting nail polish is guaranteed to stay on three to five days longer or your money back. So, uh... Why don't you get a bottle of Hazel Bishop Long-Lasting Complexion Glow or get a Hazel Bishop manicure at your nearest cosmetic counter. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back again next week as usual with another big surprise on This Is Your Life. And now to all of you, the best of everything for the new year. Good night. Good night. Everybody. See you next week. This is your life. Is directed by Axel Gruenberg, produced by Alfred Pascal and Axel Gruenberg for Ralph Edwards. To fix the beauty of her native state in the terms of art is the unusual occupation of Mrs. Pansy Stockton of Denver, Colorado. Now that may not sound unusual, but wait. Only her preliminary sketches are made with the usual materials. 
Her pictures are done with the things depicted. The landscape provides its own colors and materials. It is what it seems to be, plus the emphatic touch of genius. 300 varieties may go into a picture, their shades blending in the perfection of truth. For who shall question her tints of autumn when they come from autumnal fields and forests, or her rugged rocks when their shadows and highlights were painted by that master colorist, the sun? Her pictures have an authentic three-dimensional reality and will permanently reflect the scenes that inspired and produced them. 10,000 pieces may go into a landscape like this. As a child in a mountain cabin, Mrs. Stockton, lacking paints or crayons, made pictures with growing things. Today, she is world famous for her sun paintings.
is the unusual occupation of Mrs. Pansy Stockton of Denver, Colorado. Now, that may not sound unusual, but wait. Only her preliminary sketches are made with the usual materials. Her pictures are done with the things depicted. The landscape provides its own colors and materials. It is what it seems to be, plus the emphatic touch of genius. 300 varieties may go into a picture, their shades blending in the perfection of truth. For who shall question her tints of autumn when they come from autumnal fields and forests, or her rugged rocks when their shadows and highlights were painted by that master colorist, the sun? Her pictures have an authentic three-dimensional reality and will permanently reflect the scenes that inspired and produced them. 10,000 pieces may go into a landscape like this. As a child in a mountain cabin, Mrs. Stockton, lacking paints or crayons, made pictures with growing things. Today, she is world famous for her sun paintings. 